Hey everyone, so I'm back with another video, and this is a Yu-Gi-Oh! news related video, and we're going to talk about more Yu-Gi-Oh! and Konami events, and more specific tournament events that have been uh, going on as of late, and along with the rules and policies that are going to be adopted in these specific events. So, with the current pandemic, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! events have been cancelled, and some have even been postponed, such as organized play. Some Konami events have been left up in the air for future interpretation, and, as you may recall at the start of the shutdown, all US Konami events stopped. While some still happen in different parts of the world, now places have been opening up again, and so have other Yu-Gi-Oh! events as a result. But as the pandemic continues to surge in the US, it may look like US organized play may cease again along with tournament events. However, Konami is trying to implement policies to resume organized Yu Gi Oh events and play. But before we get into the more policies that they're trying to adopt, let me cover a few topics that they have, uh, well, events and tournaments that they've been canceled. So, some of the events that have been cancelled include events such as YCS Indianapolis, which was supposed to be around August 22nd to August 23rd, that's when it was postponed to be, but now it is officially cancelled. Similarly, the WCQ National Championship was postponed, but now it is cancelled. Also, Konami has said organized play and promotional events are indefinitely postponed until further notice. Konami also released a statement from their official page where they say, We are aware of the steps that communities across the nation have taken to gradually reopen. However, with increased daily COVID-19 cases occurring around the U.S., we want to prioritize the safety and well-being of our communities. As circumstances evolve throughout the coming weeks, we will periodically provide future updates relating to the status and local organized play and promotional events as we review the government health authority guidelines. Please continue to visit our Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG website and official social media channels on Twitter and Facebook for the latest news updates. So that's pretty much the gist of what they said on their official website in terms of organized play and how things are going to be proceeding from here on out. And because of it, Konami has set forth a couple of guidelines and rules for all those who attend KDE and TCG tournaments who are expected to read, understand, and adhere to all tournament policy and penalty guideline documents. So one of the new rules you could say for this is you must not touch the opponent's cards or items. So this sets up a problem where it interferes with you reading opponent's cards or discard effects along with dice rolls, shuffling your opponent's deck, checking the opponent's graveyard, and taking control of your opponent's cards if you use a card effect. So these are just kind of the things that can go wrong and become a little more difficult with this kind of stipulation and guideline. So furthermore, you must also carry alcohol-based hand sanitizer and use it frequently throughout the event. So you can imagine using these before matches, during matches, and after matches, and especially if you accidentally touch your opponent's belongings or cards. This is probably going to be ignored because since Konami had to previously make a shower rule, I don't think people are going to particularly adhere to this too strictly. And I guess I can imagine more, I guess, scuffles between people, attendees, and organizers happening because of this. So this is part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, code of conduct, I guess you could say. And another rule that they're going to implement pertains to refusal of entry. So it says, do not attend an event if you are ill. If you display signs of being ill, you may be refused entry. So they say symptoms of illness include, but are not limited to, fever, cough, dry cough, tiredness, difficulty breathing, chest pain, or pressure. So my immediate issue with this is it's hard to detect these symptoms, especially symptoms of being tired. It's not very practical. Furthermore, chest pains, difficulty breathing, and coughs occur because of a lot of different things. So it's hard to say it's because this person's experiencing these symptoms because of the current pandemic, the virus that's happening because of this current pandemic. 
Also, let's be very real. There are going to be a lot of people still showing up to these events despite being ill, whether if they have the common cold, a flu, or whatever it may be. If you've ever been to a local card shop or just your locals in general, there are a lot of people that still show up despite them being sick. On top of that, another issue I see with this is you're packing people into a very close space. So this is the perfect outlet for colds and flus to spread because conventions have a vast amount of people and there are just so many points of contact because those people are in close quarters. Furthermore, the next rule pertains to social distancing. So the rule says, you must be familiar with your local government's rules of social distancing. Tournament venues will enforce social distancing rules and will limit the amount of people at the convention. You are encouraged to wear facial protection. They further go on to say, failure com to comply with this rule may result in you being expelled from the venue. So I guess my first issue with this is the close proximity of people being in this venue kind of defeats the purpose of social distancing. Because think about it, if you're close enough to play Yu-Gi-Oh with someone, you're probably less than six feet away from them, which is not in accordance with the social distancing rules. And I mean... This doesn't even take into account that people may pool outside of the convention or may gather in groups outside of the convention. They may be talking to each other. They may be saying they're excited for the convention they, and they may be huddled around in the circle or they may be huddled around the lines or bottleneck, bottlenecking the lines when they're trying to get inside the venue. So that's not even taking into account these issues. Furthermore, bathrooms are another issue because they're currently close quartered usually not cleaned and they usually aren't really the cleanliest places to be they're possibly the biggest place of contamination you could possibly be in so that's another issue i mean these bathrooms are pretty much a cesspool for you to basically i guess increase your furthermore point of contact with other people and potentially get not be safe essentially so another issue i see is the summer heat in general this is another thing a lot of I don't see a lot of people taking into account. Summer heat, I mean, obviously will cause people to sweat, and especially in these conventions where a lot of a lot of people are gathered around with each other, I mean, it tends to create a lot of body heat, so a lot of people sweat because of it, and that pretty much propagates more droplets despite the fa the facial covering that you may have. This may get in people's eyes, and who knows, maybe their facial protection isn't enough to stop those droplets or whatnot i mean it's all sorts of problems that can go that can go on i mean this happens in locals at your local card shop too if you've ever seen that happen there are a lot of people who are very sweaty and it's really hot inside in these close quarters these conventions are just a huge grand scale on this i guess card shop effect you could say so taking that into account their next rule considers trading. So their official rule on trading is you're required to use hand sanitizer before and after trading. You must ask permission to touch people's belongings and you also have to wash hands and avoid touching your face. So this pretty much contradicts the policy of not touching belongings and more in specific not touching your opponent's belongings because trading requires you to exchange items and come into close contact and involves touching binders also touching cards and likely being less than six feet apart i mean you pretty much have to be less than six feet apart in order to do trading or trade cards in general and give your opponent your binder to look at so this basically defeats social distancing policy policies and it's basically impractical so i mean i guess a common situation you could see is someone could have forgot that they touched their face or scratched their nose before trading and they didn't wash their hands and therefore they touched their binder they touched their cards before trading and therefore they hand over that same infected binder onto the unknowing person that they're about to trade with and i mean this is just this is just grounds for all sorts of unsightly things to happen this is all grounds for people potentially becoming infected i mean there's so many there's so much room for people to forget and not follow up upon these rules and it puts people in harm's way in my opinion so i for those reasons i don't think that proper this whole trading rule is effective overall 
So this next rule kind of ties in with the whole not touching your opponent stuff. So it's saying bring your own materials. Avoid sharing materials such as dice, pens, and paper. So by bringing your own materials such as dice, it prevents contact between players. And to work with this rule, Konami organizers are also saying that you have to cut your deck in the way that your opponent instructs you to. So this is mainly intended for when you search a card from your deck and your opponent has to cut your deck. But in order to remain in compliance with these guidelines, they're saying you have to cut your deck in the way that your opponent specifies. So that's basically the way I guess they're going to get around it. And you do that vice versa between you and your opponent. And so also another thing that they're taking into account, normally when you report the, the win of the duel or whoever wins the duel, they have to write it down on a sheet of paper in official tournaments in these higher ranking tournaments. But they don't want people essentially touching these slips essentially and spreading whatever they may spread. And so instead of writing it on a sheet of paper, people are going to verbalize these things to the scorekeeper and they're basically going to go up to the scorekeeper while remaining six feet apart and telling them the match results instead of having to record it on a sheet of paper. I still see issues with this in terms of, let's say there's a round that goes on and then a lot of people finish up their matches and now you have a bunch of people rushing over to the scorekeeper and now you have all these people trying to tell the scorekeeper while keeping this under a relatively efficient amount of time and you have all these people trying to relay their scores to the scorekeeper and you have a bunch of people lining up and you have them bottlenecking and coming into close contact this kind of so this kind of compromises the whole thing of keeping your distance and bringing your own materials and it just kind of I guess in my in my mind brings up more of the situations and issues that I've had with previous guidelines in this new I guess kind of set of rules that Konami's implementing. So yeah, that's basically been my take on this whole I guess these new guidelines and uh, events that Konami's been basically in implementing on Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments as of late. I really wanted to make this video because I thought Yu-Gi-Oh was kind of in a weird spot because Things were being shut down at first, and then Yu-Gi-Oh! events were starting to reopen again, and Konami was saying, oh, now we can play. But now it seems like we're going to be going back into a shutdown in the in the States, in the United States, um, because of the surge in the pandemic. So, uh, I don't know. This, this is kind of an uncertain time for Yu-Gi-Oh! in terms of tournament events and just events in general. So let me know if, uh, if you think these... these tournament events are going to actually fall through or is the pandemic going to have more of a i guess pressing pressing influence over this entire ordeal but yeah that's basically been my take if you would like to support more content like this you can do so at my patreon which i normally link in the description below i really appreciate any support that you guys give me whether if it's on patreon just liking the video or just sitting there enjoying it in general i really appreciate any support you guys give me and it really means a lot but with that that pretty much wraps up the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Alright, take care.